This is a Frank podcast. There ain't no blue tick next to this guy's name, though. It's INF on this episode of Honest to Who. One of the most creative rappers in the game right now. He's the uh, one of one of five of Swrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
and it just kept like I wanted to ask so many questions and and find the answers to all those questions and not until later I realized oh damn like this has mm. got me to where I am now yeah. because of just based on my curiosity that turned into a passion for something that I you know wanted to know the answers to I guess like because yeah. I was just asking like how is this made who made this like what is the sound how was the sound made what am I listening to what am I feeling like what is this feeling what is bass were you what always is, like, like that as a kid uh, <laughs> just curious. We always like eh, nah. no, no, no. Um, I'm not. No, 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 hold no, on, no, hold on. No, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> I'm not trying to get all no, fucking no, no. Doctor Phil on this. No, no, but no, I'm no. saying there are kids yeah. that are super curious about everything. Yeah, and there are kids that um, aren't. Damn, I, I think nah, nah. I'm gonna, I don't think I was curious about much as a kid. Um, I mean, like, around music. Around, around music, yes, yeah. I was. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I think that got addicted, uh, addictive for me. Like I always wanted to know what was what, who was this? Like, you know, just all these questions I needed answers to. And I still feel the same way now. Like uh, that same passion for music is still there. It's like, yeah. yeah. With, with that passion, mm. like growing up, how, like, and for the people that know, how is like a Red Eye Society, how are they connected with you guys? I know it, but mm. it just... You know, I'd rather you explain it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so my older brother, J1, he was in uh, Red Eye Society. And then, like, his friends, like, Tech, uh, Venomous, um, even, like, all the OG members of Red Eye Society. Because it was, like, it was, like, it was, like, Wu-Tang. Yeah. Almost, like, you know, I like got massive click. Um, and, man, I looked, I looked up to those guys, like, because I, you know, as a kid, just hearing the music coming out of the room next to me, uh, my brother's room. And it was just like that raw, like, I don't give a fuck kind of energy. Mm. Um, you know, and as a kid, like, uh, you know, soaking that all in, it was just, I don't know. I, I guess, again, I was curious, like, what or what are these guys doing next door? Like, you know, and then when they would leave, shit, I would like go into the room and like push play and all the, like push all the buttons on the drum machines, like touch all the vinyl and stuff like that. Um, but they would have like lyrics everywhere, like all their papers like written down. Wow. Like everywhere, like stacks of just bars, just bars and bars, bars. But like it made no sense to me because at that age I was like, what, are they, what does this even mean? Yeah. Like, you know, I can't read the writing properly. Like, you know. Well, how old um, were you? Like, I would have been like fucking was that your six, f- seven, eight. Well, that was your six. first kind of like that's what music is? Like was yeah, there anything I, before that? or was uh, it? No, nah, I mean like I knew, I think – that was my first realization of you can do this, like this uh, is possible kind of thing, rather than just hearing music on the radio next door to my bedroom, music is being made. Yeah. Like this is happening. This is real. Like uh, it's, uh, it's achievable. And I was like, okay, like, and at that point in time, I guess I was in it. Like, it, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that it was going to happen to me, but, it was like, I didn't have a choice. Like it, I was like so engulfed in it mm. that, <clears throat> you know. But, you know, like, bro, I met this dude and he was a, um, he was a fucking wood, tr- uh, he was a wood carver, right? Yeah. Moldy yeah. and, st- <clears throat> Moldy, uh, what is it called? Uh, oh man, I forgot what it was called. Carver. Anyway, uh, the, the, there's a name for it. Yeah, anyway, yeah. so toy, like art. Yeah. And then like, he would tell me, bro, like his dad was a carver and his dad's dad was a carver and like, that's all he knew, right? Is it the same with you? Was there anything before your brother? Was mum and dad musical or auntie um, and uncles or anything like that? Not really, no. Nah. Like I know that my taste in music was based off like the stuff that my dad would listen to, my mum would listen to, um, my sister. Like, what kind of stuff? Oh, you know, just like classic rock, jazz, blues, um, house. Like, bro, I'm a sucker for house music. Right. Like, I love house music like crazy like i'm just gonna we'll get to that later because <laughs> man the euphoria is d- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah it's a track but um, um yeah because i i noticed like i uh, i read this book this outliers book from um, malcolm gladwell and yeah. they talk about bro i gotta let you it's it's an on book mm. bro and this dude was it's the it's the dude that did that um uh Ten thousand hours. Yo, yeah, yeah. He yeah, kind of yeah, came yeah. up with that shit, right? And he was like, he he had a look at all these different 
people, successful people, and then went deep dive into stuff. And like Bill Gates and all these people he even went like, man, there's this crazy, bro, this thing buzzed me out. It was like, um, he did a, he did a study on why Asian people are good at, at meth. Bro, and I was like, this is the most racist shit I've ever fucking seen. But bro, he breaks it down. Is it? Is it because like, do, in that culture, watch yourself. In, watch yourself. No, no, in that country, they they start. <laughs> Don't do it. There's do cameras here. Start watch your fucking self. Earlier, like no, 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 no. We go way earlier? back. G. Oh, okay. We go yeah, fucking yeah. way back. Oh, yeah, yeah. It come down to the rice. Okay. Watch myself. I need to watch it. Stop. Don't start. No, no, no. Here's <laughs> so the. Cl- don't like, the closer you are to the river, mm, mm. right? The better you are at maths because the closer you are to the river, the more more rice you can make, and they use rice as currency. Crazy rice used to be currency in yeah. like early China, like yeah, yeah, early, yeah. early. So they would be like, cool, like they'd pay everything in rice. Like yeah. I'd pay here, I pay this, like yeah. So then they had to learn how to be good with with currency and numbers. Oh, shit. and then the further out you got, the less kind of clicked on you were. And this is, we're going centuries and centuries back. And I, I, listened, I, I read that and I was like, wow, I would have mm. never thought that. And like, you know, like that kind of thing, because it goes back centuries and centuries and centuries. Yeah. So was it always a creative thing? Like with, with is it more of a outlet for being creative, creating music? Because you, you rap, mm. then you, you're creating, you're producing as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I think it's just the fire, you know, that I have and I, my favorite thing to do is figure out how to get what's up here, out here. Like how to, like people say, they would ask like, what is a creative or like explain a creative to me. And then I think my only, not my only, but um, my way of saying like what a creative is, is just like bringing, bringing something to life that wasn't here before. Mm. Bringing something, yeah to this world that never existed something different whether it's like man like i've said this before like changing lanes and in, in traffic like you've just created another way you know and, and like a lot of people say oh, i'm not creative i'm like everyone's creative mm. you're going to work you're actually creating like new possibilities new ways of living or you know like it doesn't have to like creating something doesn't mean you have to like build something or like you know you know what i mean yeah i get um, you so I guess, yeah, for me, it's just like my favorite thing to do is just like bring whatever's up here, out here. And again, like I'm so curious, like how do I do it? What's one of, what, what's what one of the hardest like obstacles for you? Mm. Like I don't mean in general, but what is something that's like stopped that from happening with you? Like it could be anything from resource, I don't know, but mm-hmm. is there anything that's a valid stop to just being getting from what's your head <clears throat> out? Um. I think what happens is, so for example, if I'm making music, if I'm producing something and it's like, and I've come to a point where, damn, like the sound that I'm looking for is really hard to like get to. And then without even noticing you're, while you're on, on the track to find that sound, you find something else that either sounds better, if, mm. if you know what I mean. And you're like, oh, like this chord sounds more better than what I was even looking for. Okay. So I guess like when you're on that path, you kind of find. It's ADHD, you know, bro. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. That sounds yeah, like ADHD. It's, bro, it might be. It might be Dr. Tim. Yeah, bro. Hey, Dr. we've already Tim. started, bro. Mr. Who. Oh, Mr. Who. Who, brother. Um, yeah, man. So I think that's what that is. Because I think, yeah. I I mean, I totally, I think a lot of creatives are yeah, like I that. I could be wrong. Like there's someone's, Probably watching like shut the fuck up. No, but nobody I, will say that, bro. They'll say I No, I yeah. feel I feel I, I get what you're saying. You'll be like, okay, I would need to do this here. Mm. Here's what's my idea. Like I, you know, like <clears throat> let's say like I'm like, I've got this idea for a show or something. Yeah. I'll chuck it out there and then I'll be like, ah, oh, but actually, you know what it would be actually cooler if we did it this way and then yeah. it branches off into something that yeah. you Yeah, that yeah. is actually quite natural, but at the same time it's stunting your path I yeah suppose. yeah yeah i think but what you're also doing is you're allowing other ideas to happen like you're once you start something like writing a script or coming up with other ideas jotting them down you're actually like allowing other ideas it's, it's inevitable mm. that something else is going to happen and go whoa i can't believe i didn't think of this like originally yeah but because 
you're in a space where you're allowing these things to happen. It just happens naturally, yeah. Do you ever find mm-hmm. like, fuck, this is a good conversation. I'm like, yo, do you ever find, uh, when's the last time that doubt hit you, bro? That's what I wanted to ask Every you. day, bro. Yeah? Every day. Explain to me what you mean by <clears throat> that. Self-doubt to me is something that I don't want to assume, but all artists probably go through. Yeah. Like I know for sure myself, I go through self-doubt and I think that is a part of the ecosystem of being a creative. Like there's so many things that go into your art. Yeah. Self-doubt for sure. One of them, like this morning, man, like I'm my own worst enemy. We're our own worst enemies because we know ourselves the best. Mm. We know how to bring ourselves down. We know how to lift ourselves up to the highest point and bring ourselves down to that the lowest point. That was a bar, point. by the way. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm a, just that, like, that, that was a fucking like bar right there. And like, we are, <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, we are our own worst enemies, man. Like, you know, so um, I think, um, yeah, self-doubt kicks in randomly. Like it could be like, you know, that little devil on your shoulder, like, bro, you ain't shit. Yeah. You can't do this. What are you doing? And I think that is where you go, bet, watch me. Like, watch me do this. And it's kind of like, uh, you, it's like a battle with yourself really, you know? And um, that's why I feel like when you're creating something, when you're making something, make it for you because that yeah. should be, you know, it should be of service to yourself. Like, is this, am I happy with this? Cool. Like, as long as you're happy, everything else around, like, will come to either fruition or, like, you know, the energy will reflect. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, self-doubt is definitely something that bro, I go through every day. Like, I was self-doubt, like, I know, on the man. way here, bro. Like, it made you know, me it's, angry. It's, it's, <laughs> that made me fucking it's, angry. It's, uh, huh? Yeah, man, it's... um. I was like, hey, why are you, why you, you like, doubting? Because, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I, I, I get that. Yeah. And I understand what you I understand what you're talking about because mm-hmm. there's some it is that little devil on your shoulder that's like you mm. ain't shit. Like I, I man, I think every everybody has that. Yeah. And it's how you deal with that that little devil and what you want to mm. do with that little devil. Yeah. And there's so, certain people that are fucking Michael Jordan, I take that personal with shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. And there's certain people that, oh no, nah, maybe they're right. And but yeah. that 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 thing changes daily. Mm. For me, man, I'm like Nah, fuck. Uh, maybe I'm not as good as I think I am, or maybe mm. maybe that was a fluke. Yeah. Maybe what I did was fucking. Maybe that was just a one off. Mm. But yeah, little by little, I've kind of gone. You know, like you you build the other one. You build the mm. the warrior on the other shoulder to go. Nah, fuck that, dude. You're yeah, the yeah. man. Yeah, worrying. Fuck, it's the worst day. Like I know everybody worries, but I try to tell myself like, if worrying's gonna fix it and make it better, keep worrying. Mm. Keep doing it. Oh, I like. That. Okay. Is that is that gonna fix your situation? Cool. Keep yeah. worrying. That's cool. Because uh, yeah, because I think you know sometimes being you know being a rapper and mm. a and a musician. Well, being a musician firstly, yeah. but being a rapper is is comparison always a big thing? Because I mean, rappers kind of built off. I'm better than you. Mm. Like watch this. Like it's the battle rap. It's the OG. Yeah. You know, Run DMC. St- it's always that. Yo, check me out. And we're always it's that. Um, you know, I'm the man type yeah. buzz, that bravado. Yeah. Have you noticed that like in the last, I don't know, maybe five years, that's kind of made a bit of a switch or is, uh, personally with you, have you mm. ever kind of been a, I don't know, that's kind of gotcha? Um, yeah, I think, sorry, excuse me. Um, for sure. I'm a competitive person, like, especially with rap and I've been, I've been a hater I've been a hater, man. Like, you know, and I think, <laughs> bro, I'm just, I've bro, been, I'm just, oh, hold up. Like, as soon as you said that, I thought back to Boomer and I've, I've, had, I've been around that guy yeah, yeah, enough yeah. to know, man, that, yeah. that dude, he's a, he's a competitive motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. He is, bro. He is. He's a, he's a competitor, our bro. But, um, <clears throat> but you are right. Like it is a, it is a competition. Yeah. And is it still a competition? Um, I think as I got, uh, older, um, I've realized that the only competition is just me, really. Like we're all in the sport together, um, local artists, international artists. You know, we're all playing a part of bringing something that, again, like it wasn't there before. So what can we do to add value to this community? Um, but of course I'm competitive, man. Like, But again, like comparing, like I do this a lot, like I shouldn't. 
But again, it's just like, you know, all that self-doubt is all part of the ecosystem. Like, um, yeah, comparison, like when I compare myself to like other artists and stuff like that, it really like doesn't do me any justice. Mm. Like, you know, like comparison is the death of joy. So like, you know, when your favorite artist comes out and then like the critics would be like, nah, you know, so like Cole better than Kendrick, like all of that shit is just like, bro, why stop? Just enjoy it. Like stop trying to compare like who's the goat and stuff like that um, because you're just fucking up the vibe. Like just, can you just enjoy the music instead of comparing people yeah, like that? I feel, know? yeah. I feel that it's just a human nature thing sometimes, mm. eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just 100%. like, oh yeah, I can. And then especially with social media and fuck it, Spotify numbers and shit like that, you can oh. kind of, there's a metric to it. Mm. You know, there's a, oh fuck, I got 10,000 in the first day yeah. and they got 9,000, you yeah. know? And <clears throat> I think, you were right. It kills. It kills the vibe. It kills mm. the buzz of, like what you said, just creating something for you. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent, man. Like, and and again, like, I mean, you could have the most Spotify plays and stuff like that, but there's just different things that translate, again, differently to real life or like, um, yeah, to other artists and stuff like that. So, like, if I have fifty listeners, but I go do a show. And I've got like a thousand people in the crowd or, you know, uh, you know, as to like an artist who will have like a thousand listeners and then they go do a show, but then no one shows up. Mm. So like a lot of those things, yeah. This, uh, yeah. Play a part like yeah. that, you know? I felt like, you know, like in terms of New Zealand hip hop, I think, um, you know, the golden age, I suppose, what they call it, you know, with your scribes and your scribes and they harm more and when all that and the Dawn Raid stuff kind of mm. happened. I felt from the outside looking in because I wasn't in like the outside looking in there was a competitive element to that mm. but I feel now more than ever it's like the opposite I mean you look at people like yourself Tom Scott then you look at the community dudes you know like Rizvan and then you look mm. at Melo and you look everybody's kind of helping each other yep. a lot more why do you what do you think that is I know that's a hard un like question but is it just the nature of it or did, was there a catalyst to like, hey, we all need to stick together? Mm, I think, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but for myself, I guess me looking at it, I think a lot of artists have grown and they've realized like, you know, we can put our egos aside. You know, we we can, we can say like, we're the fucking best and like do all this shit as much as we want. But I think you know, when you do shit together, you know, as a community and, and, and work together and collab, things work out better. Yeah. If, if that makes sense. Like maybe I'm doing a shit with an ex explanation. It's a, it's a village of it, but like, mentality. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, yeah, I, I just, <laughs> I honestly think when you, once you put your ego aside, shit just happens way more organically and freely. Fuck, that's, that's <clears> interesting. <throat> Like that's true though. Uh, like instead of walking around and be like, oh, I don't want to work with like so and so because I know I'm better, I know I'm this. Uh, but then like once you put up those walls, it's like, all right, what now? Now what? Like you're not gonna grow. You know, I could be learning, you know, from this person. Like they could be learning from me. Like you know. Um, so once you put up those walls of of like your your ego and stuff like that, and it kind of like you put yourself in a corner almost. So I think, yeah, just like working together on on anything really, like whether it's, you know, like um, community-wise or music and stuff like that, I think it's better for everybody to grow. It's Yeah, it's, <clears throat> it just makes sense. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if we're, I mean, we're just, I, it's like the NBA right now, right? Like, you know, they were like, oh, the, you know, it's not like the old days when Jordan used to, you know, like not work out with anybody. And mm. now, you know, LeBron's working out with KD and uh, yeah, and yeah. it's like, no, they're just trying to be the best version of themselves, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. And like listening to you, I mean, you know, like I've said this multiple times, I put you up there in terms of my best <laughs> rapper because I enjoy the how it relates to my world because yep. you talk about things that things. But when I, when, when Music and Street Fighter came out and it was you and Tom Scott, mm. it made me just... Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, you know, cause those are the top two for me. Yeah. Um, and you know, you, you talk about 
being the like saying that you're the best. Like, is it a, just a consensus thing that Tom is just fucking the best? <laughs> Bro, I, I know that, that song that, was like, yeah, yeah. I, Did you go in the boot? Like, for those who have not, you know, like you need to just go and check that song out. It's Tom Scott and it's INF and they're just battling about two of my favorite things, yeah. music and Street Fighter. Yeah. And um, yeah, I always, that's my go-to, man. That was like, that's actually probably... Was that the first time you worked with Tom? Nah, nah. I mean, oh, on a verse, I think it's our first time, but I had produced something for him. Yeah. When I was like a kid, like maybe I was like 16 or 17, did this song. Uh, he put out a song called Electromagnetic. Um, was it a piece or? Nah, it's just, I think it's just, I think it's just, oh my God. Okay. Damn, Don't worry. My bad, my bad. We edit that shit. Okay. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like we, I think it was like 2016 or even 15, even 14. I don't, wow. bro, man, he hit me and he was like, bro, I got, a ver oh, I got a, you know, a song called Music and Street Fighter. And it just had the hook on it. And I was like, oh, yeah, dope. And then I sent my verse back to him and he was just like, fuck, this is crazy. And like, and, and for him to say that, yeah, you know, like, and I love that there was, um, the fact that he even thought of me, yeah. like just that was like, holy shit. Like this guy thought of me, yeah. then reached out to me. Like all these, he took all these steps. I was like, man, I must be pretty good at this. Like, Was that your first be... time of going like, fuck, maybe I'm actually better than what I think I am? Um, yeah, it... well, because it's from a different perspective. Eh? Yeah. Like it's from like, it's, you know, Tom, like. Yeah. Because I think yeah, we all yeah. kind of have those moments. Mm. Like it just popped in, in my head. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, you your brother. Welcome. Welcome, <laughs> but uh, no, everybody has those moments where they're yeah. like, like I do it like a few times. Like I'm just like, wow, maybe I, because you know, the self-doubt mm. sets in and you're exactly, like, fuck, yeah. maybe I'm not that good. Yeah. And then when somebody like him reaches out and mm. says, bro, like, would you be, it, it must be a fucking buzzy moment. Yeah. I think it's because you get caught up in your own little bubble for so long that you don't realize like you're so you're so passionate right you're so in it that you don't even see the bigger picture right mm. and then someone outside is like yo like do you want to do this blah, blah 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 and you're like holy shit there's more going around yeah. like outside than my own little circle so that was dope that was like i was so happy yeah, yeah, when that happened and, Cause, yeah. yeah, that would have, yeah, because I mean, he's consensusly, consensus, consensusly, consensus, Con Con consensus, oh, man, don't make me say the just, fucking big words. We'll just, we'll just consensus. There's a consensus that he yeah. is, you know, you know, one of the most talented artists mm. and I mean, uh, more, more lyricists mm. and uh, that, that has ever come out of New Zealand. But has there been anyone else that has reached out to you or you've worked with that you're just like, wow, like this really buzzed me out the first time they reached out to you? Um, damn, I can't even think right now like that. But D dot, I know. Nah, I don't think he's. No. Nah. Okay. Nah. Sorry, we'll just edit that out. Sorry, <laughs> we'll just cut that sorry, in. sorry. D, D dot, reach out for my boy, man. No, no. Shit, he's waiting. <laughs> no, no. Um, um, shit. Nah, Sav? I can't even. Yeah, Sav. Yeah, Sav. Bro, working working with um, Sav is amazing. Eh? Yeah. He's so like full of knowledge and he's just so open to sharing that and um, giving us like so much guidance and, and information on um, how to do things or what to look out for. Like Savage would have seen everything. He's seen life, bro. Yeah. So yeah, for him to just be that like, um, like a guardian kind of thing, you know, even when we go on tour and like we might be on the same lineup and stuff like that, he's just so informative, like, so helpful, eh? Like, he just wants to see us win. Like, a lot of artists win. Yeah. And, like, like I said, like, no ego. And I guess that's that's what I mean. Like, you're helping uh, other artists or, like, the, the, the community grow a lot yeah. more because you're not just keeping everything to yourself. You're, yeah, you're sharing it. You're... So, you know, like, um, with um, Smokey, you know, doing producing... 
and things over in the States. Is the States a bit different? Are they, uh, like, when it comes to music, do they keep a lot of this shit to themselves, or is it a community thing, or um, th- that you've seen? I don't want to, yeah, yeah, it's nah, not a I mean, blanket statement. No, nah, no, nah, I, from what I've seen, I feel like, yeah, collaboration is key. Mm. Collaboration is key. Um, work ethic. When Smoke went to, uh, he went to LA for a little bit and then he came back and then he was like, boys, we don't work hard enough. Oh, wow. But ever since he said that to us, when we were in the studio, we, crazy. The, the work ethic that we have is just like for the last so many years is crazy to the point where when artists ask me, oh, can you do a verse for this or can you, um, you know, change something here and there, bro one day or like whatever, like it's quick. I don't do those like I do it when I can. a month, like, like yeah. what is this? Like, you know, cause we're, I think we're just so laid back here, like just so super chill. Um, but Does that, that work yeah. good for us or not? Do you think we need to It depends to what it? kind of, I think it depends what kind of uh, artist you want to be, mm. I guess. If you want to have that in your inventory, like you want to be punctual. If you want to have that as in your like little artist backpack. That, that makes um, a difference though, right? Yeah, it, uh, it does. Like, and, and for me, like when we work with other artists and they get back to us like super quick, for me, I'm like, yo, we, I love working with this person because they're just, they're, they're on time. Yeah. They're not, sorry, not like, not late, but like, you know what I mean? Like, but the, it, it shows me that you're passionate about mm, it. That's what I was about to say. That you give a fuck. Yeah. You know, so it's a priority to you and, and you're, you're showing us that. So for sure, we want to work with you again. I mean, work ethic for you, mm. bro, it's been documented, you know, because you've been on the, you've been, especially sorted, they've been putting stuff out for a long time over and over again. Mm. And, you know, it's not a full body of work, but we're getting a lot of things yep. out here. Yep. Uh, Euphoria just came out. Man, like I never thought, it was one of those things where you never thought that you needed. Yeah. And it was dance music and sort it, put it together. And it's something that I'm like, there's going to be a lot of people that are on here going, some talk about music all the time, but I, <laughs> that, that shit was fucking on, bro. Like, uh, what, what was the idea you, with, with Euphoria? Like, Man, I think it's just the vibe. Were man. you just like, like fuck it, let's just make just, a fucking dance music. I mean, because we love dance music anyway. We love like, there's so much music that we're into outside of hip hop that I think if you got to know us or like if you met us, outside of music you would understand like oh you guys these guys just don't listen to hip-hop like just just hip-hop mm. these guys are so much more than that and i think also the cool thing is we get to bring our hip-hop fans and like our dance like house fans they you know bring together. them to the same party fuck you know Let's and then hey at, at that party like the hip-hop Cats are just in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Fuck. I, you know what bro, I mean? I, like, to, bro, I would be honest. Man, yeah. I don't listen to that dance stuff, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, anything was sorted, I'll be like, yeah, I'll give this a go. And it yeah. took me like three listens and I was like, yo, this shit is, this shit is on. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then just more and more music coming out. And even some of the, bro, my favorite part of lockdowns was waiting for uh, like either you or Spike to freestyle, like yeah. drop a freestyle. Yeah. And like, is it important to just keep the train moving? Um, for me it is because what I'm doing is just, it's like a, it's like going to the gym. Mm. Keeping your body moving, you know. Um, yeah, mobility as a as an artist. That, so, that's my mobility. Yeah. Like, you know, walking, running, all of that, that was my gym. Like when I'm in the studio, that's my gym because I'm training you know, my creativeness, my, my imagination, um, my patience, um, all of that. So I think over lockdown, making these videos, like freestyle videos, it was just a way for me to keep the hamster in the wheel, like running. Mm. And, um, that way I could look back and go, Oh, I could have done this differently. You know, I'm like my own like analyst. So even after this, like when this comes out, I'm going to look back and go, damn, I could have Read it, read more books before this. Like I've, I've, I could have like, you know, drank more water or something like, because I'm always going to go back and sit and figure out how am I going to better myself. 
and it's I a think, great mindset to have and, when you think about it. Yeah, I'll, man, how many I, people do have that? I think yeah, because as an artist, as a professional artist, I need to keep watering this garden that I have because it's my career. So I want I need to invest in it. Yeah. So I I want to always like keep learning, keep growing, figure out how I can always better myself because overall that's going to give me fulfillment. For like other as, musicians yeah. out there or people that are into, you know, just think what would be, what is a way to water your garden? Like what, what would be the perfect idea for somebody that is a creative that, mm. you know, uses their brain to make money, I suppose. And yeah. what, what are ways that you use to, I don't know, fuck, it's not a device fucking podcast, but, um, <laughs> you know, like what, what would be a way? Um, Cause I mean, reading books, I get, you know, yeah. vocabulary, but. Yeah. Reading books, like just opening your mind a lot more to a wider perspective. Mm. Is that the word? Perspective. Yep. Yeah. Um, and just seeing things from a different view as well. Like, and um, make lots of mistakes, man. Make he- make as many mistakes as you can. Good ones, not like, well, have you made <laughs> I don't want to see you on the news. Oh, but oh, like, shit. you know, those mistakes, but like, you know, like. Now, what are some bad mistakes you've made? Let's be honest. Uh, bad. <laughs> Let's let's fucking get it out right now, bro. Um, it's bad mistakes. Like for me, I'm not gonna say, but like I've done some like Did terrible collabs. Eh? Like oh, ter- so, like as a young artist, you know, when you're just hungry and you just want to go, blah, 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 yeah. and like and and be seen, and and you want everyone to be like, oh, this guy is like the man. I think I was too eager to just show off my skills on everything yeah. a- instead of instead of um, actually thinking about what I'm doing and saying no a lot more. I wish I said no earlier in my career because I was just too much of a yes, yes, yes because I was like hungry and like everyone's got to see me rap. Like I got bars. Like I need to jump on every single song. And I think for me, I shouldn't have done that yeah. because now I realize how good I was and how accessible I was allowing myself to be mm. for other artists. Um, Fuck, and I, that's probably I like a cocky- I didn't even I think know, of that though. You know, like I, I shouldn't have allowed myself to be so accessible. Um, but then, you know, you never, you can't tell the future. So, yeah. but like speaking from now, like in this moment of time, I, I wish I was a bit stingy with my- Workmanship. I thought your bad, yeah. your bad mistake would have been of fucking tagging up all the walls and all new hunger. Oh no, no, I'm not trying to put my. <coughs> I was D- a good. I was a goodie. Um, I never did. Some that. of the some of the back is. of the bus seats, bro. Say otherwise, bro. I have no idea what you're talking about, man. Bro, fuck. Come on, bro. Don't fuck. Even... Tell the people, bro, because I know. Oh, Shit. Man. Come on, G. Student of. What do you want? High school. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bro, is it true you're the fucking handball champ, bro? Is this a? We the best ham- oh, bro. I nah, heard you're bro, the best nah. handball champ man, of Onihonga High School that's ever been created. <laughs> nah, man. Heard you're the Goldberg, the Bill Goldberg, the Bill of, Goldberg of handball. Was the <laughs> what? Nah, man. Fuck. Well, come man, on, bro. Everybody's um, good at handball. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Like, I, who's it there? Who's saying this? Bro, I've the heard. Streets are talking. The streets, bro. The streets are talking. I'm not. Dun, dun, dun. Is it, bro, this, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. I know that shit, bro. Handball, man. I don't even know. Like, we could. We could Probably we could play think. we could play right now, bro. I, I, heard you with I, the I haven't played handball in ages. But bro, it was the go-to. It though. was the go-to. Yeah. It was the go-to. Where was the Street Fighter machines in Onihonga? Uh Miwa's. Miwa's bus depot. Oh, like sorry, Onihonga oh. bus depot. Yes. Was it, um is that what you Yeah, yeah no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Takeaway is called Miwa's. Uh, it's called something else now, but they had um the Rainbow Edition. Street Fighter, and it was like the two fireballs. Oh yeah, I know which one. Bro, it's the cheap all one. that crazy shit. And fucking Zangief would do yeah, the yeah. fucking, he'd do his little right whoop, across whoop, the whoop, yeah, And yeah. then the fire would pop out the side of him. Yeah. That's, and you just, three buttons. Da, 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 yeah, da, yeah. Da. They had that and then the uh, hyper fighter. So th- see, now you're talking. Yeah. So the cool thing was like, if, that they had, the cool thing was that they had two of those machines. They had the like, options. Yeah, they had the options. You so could be a cheap fighter motherfucker was like, and play yeah, their yeah, fucking yeah. rainbow version. Yeah, yeah. Or I kind of love that as like a, just to get a fix, like, yeah. oh, look at all this, like, cr- all these crazy fireballs, like, everywhere. You feel both, like, the top and bottom half of the screen, and it's just so cheap, you know? But it's like, hey. you're getting a fix, like, oh, shit, this is so cool. Finishing this without even trying. 
But um, <laughs> oh, you notice that like oh, pause. Uh, do you notice that um, fucking um, Street Fighter and hip hop have like this? I don't know, man. They they, uh, they have this marriage, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Everybody talks about Street Fighter rappers wise, rapping wise. I think that just must have been the game, like the, as they were growing up, like the household game on Mega Drive or even now. Who, like, who's the best? Who's the best Street Fighter player that you know? That I know. Yep. You can uh, say yourself if you want to. If nah, you want to put your fucking self nah, out nah. there. Uh, I'm up there. Like, I, a hyper bro, fight? I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember playing, I know Tom's good. Tom, D-Dot's good. I Shay, think D-Dot is extremely good. Shay. So those three and, I mean, but that's because I've played them. Mm, yeah. And I, got, I think I got to play them all in the same, like within Shh. the hour. Bro, that's the So gauntlet. that's like ticking all the boxes, that's right? That's the gauntlet right there. Um, but yeah, but that's because I took, I'm sure I took an L on everyone. Like I lost to all of them mm, and but, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Like, but how I learned from that was like, I watched all, I watched the way that they played. I watched the way that they played. Like Tom kicked my ass with Dalzon. Like I did not touch him, bro. He was just like just the high sniping. kick. Sniping. The high kick. Sniping. But, that's a, that takes like, bro, hold up. Like, that takes a lot of patience to learn Dalsum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you like for those that are listening, like what the fuck are they talking about? Street Fighter Two. This dude named Dalsum. He's the Indian dude that fights in front of all the fucking elephants and shit. Mm. He's like a long rangey dude. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And takes a lot of damage though. Yeah, I think that's when my that's when I knew that my Street Fighter IQ. Was, was like just, trash. Was just guile from that night. From that right, yeah, guile and Ken. Like yeah. you know, that was my bag. Like Ken and you know, uh, and um, Blanca. Like Blanca's yes, that's my, that's my Blanca's that's my guy. Bro, that's my guy. That's, us, that's, that's us. my guy. That's my guy. That's us. We're fucking Brazilian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit. Um, so like, apparently, the, fucking overpowered in the in the in the sixth one. Oh really? He's the fucking man. Apparently. Damn. So, yeah, we gotta oh, get well. we're gonna get on sticks right now. Oh, I want to give a shout out to, yeah. to DJ Reminis. Yeah. Apparently this dude is a legend yeah. when it comes to uh, Street Fighter hyper mm. fights. Yeah. Him and Mark Hunt apparently are fucking on. Easy, yeah. So you wouldn't want to lose to Mark Hunt. He'd knock the shit out yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you don't want to do the cheap yeah. piece. No yeah, throws, yeah. though. I, uh, I don't, never throw. Uh, yeah. I, that, I don't throw. I don't know. I don't know why. And I've never, I've never gone into a Street Fighter fight and said, no throws. But it's just like, I just don't, it's like, I don't think about it. Mm. And the way I play is I don't have throws in my bag. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a bit different it's, on the newer shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, yeah. Growing up, you're like, stop being cheap, man. Stop yeah. throws, G. Yeah. Move yeah, back. yeah, yeah. Cause uh, yeah, that takes a lot of damage. Eh? Like, but I mean, hey bro, it's not cheaper if you can't, if you can't reverse it. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. I mean, just like, it's not my fault. Yeah. It's not my fault. You're just, Letting me throw you around like that? Here's a question, bro. I want to hit you, bro. Yeah. Hey, you better pause that. You better pause that shit with with regards, <laughs> with kind regards, brother. Because uh, Eddie Gordo is probably the cheapest of all cheaps. Bro, you know what? I feel like if you know how to use Eddie. I'm about to say the same thing to you. Yeah. I don't think he's cheap at all. Eddie nah. Gordo and Tekken, any Tekken. Yeah. I don't think he's cheap. I think yeah. just people get frustrated because they don't know how to block low. Exa- block low. Bro, block, low, block. Yeah, and punish. Block. Like, yeah. And, and, yeah, and punish. Like, I think when you're not a gamer like that, though, yeah. it, it may seem frustrating. Like, getting fucking sweeped Annihilated. multiple times. Yeah, with the flares, with the air flares. And you're just like, fuck. It. But uh, uh, to, um, to add to that, the person who is using Eddie is just going. Oh, yeah. Like, they and don't know what the fuck they're doing. as fuck. That's frustrating is looking at this person who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, yeah. but they're. Beating. Winning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're beating on you. Bro, I like, remember yeah. one time, bro, I, uh, at the time I had a girlfriend and we we're playing uh, Fight Night, which mm. is a great game. Mm. She kicked my mm. ass, but just doing that, and I felt ashamed. Yeah, yeah. That was Be- the last time I saw her. Because you know, like, how to play. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, rewind. What? That's the last time I was like, get out the house. Yeah. How dare you beat me <laughs> yeah, at yeah. this game? But you know, there's certain games that you're just like, ah, yeah. I just fucking, yeah. Like, but there's ones that involve a lot of skill. Yeah, yeah. And that, I think, again, that's like your ego, like, man, I know how to play this game. 
I know all the, you know, all my combos <laughs> lined up in my head. And then when you go into it it's against someone who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing and you can't do anything that you, that you know how to do, yeah. like, this is my game and you're fucking me up. That's, I guess that, you know, that is kind of embarrassing like for, for some. Jay, watch the segue. You ready for the segue? You ready for the segue, bro? Are you ready? ready? Stay ready. Bro, would you say like humble, uh, are those uh, mumble rappers would be those button mashers? <laughs> Compared to, Maybe, you know, your, your skilled, you, you've got your skilled combos, you've got yeah, your skilled yeah, bars, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then there's someone just coming up. Yeah. <laughs> I think bro, first of all, pro, yeah. first of all, rate that segue. That was hard. Fuck. That was hard. That was a hard segue. See, this is why. Yeah, yeah. This is my art form. This is my, yeah, this yeah. is my bars. Yeah, see, right I'm, I'm just. You you know, know, this is my world. Yeah, you're just living in it. Yeah. You're just staying in it. You just got a hotel. You got an Airbnb bro, in my world, brother. Oh, shit. Look at this shit. We got a fucking logo now, bro. Yeah, we got a logo. Shit. Anyway, would you say that though? Would yeah. you be more of a, you more of a purist when it comes to writing shit? Yeah, I yeah, and I think when you, you know, I'm gonna say this like I was a, I was a big hater on that shit. Like when I first heard of it, I was, I was like, man, I sounded like how the old heads would be like, this new generation, blah blah blah. Like that's what I sounded like. But I also, I can you know admit that I did sound like that at one point, but I realized. I should stop looking at things, at artists expressing themselves I, I, I sh as like, um, I was looking at it for how it, I was judging on, on how it should be. Mm. Like it should have been this way, but I changed the way I looked at it and, and just appreciated it for what it is mm. and not, it should be like this. It should be like this. When it's like, nah, man, because I was I was just like this, like just trying to express myself. Yeah. And that's how it was. And that's how it is with these new artists now. So, and that has helped me grow and appreciate so much more music and like open my eyes to like trying new things and stuff like that and embrace new sounds and mm. and new ways of making songs. So, there's a, yeah. There's so, a lot of, yeah. like, oh, sorry, but sorry. No, 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 yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. lot of like, there's a lot, and it's probably the same answer in a way that you Yeah. There's a lot of things that like a lot of musicians say, like, I'm still trying to find my sound. Mm. Is that a, is that is that the goal at the end of the rainbow that will never get found? But did you see I just rhymed there, too? <laughs> Bars. Bars. Wait, 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 I'll go back okay. again. <laughs> yeah. Finding my sound is that the gold bucket at the end of the rainbow that can never be found. Oh. Yes. Real rap raw. <laughs> to be, man, I get me on a verse. I, yes. Fucking get me on a fucking verse, brother. <laughs> Play the music. Play, play, the music. play, yeah, yeah, fucking, no. play my music out, <laughs> motherfuckers. Let's go. Um, I think like when when artists as myself, like I was, I guess I did go through that phase of like trying to find my sound. I went through a phase of like I felt like I had to yell on every song, like really scream every verse. And I found I was getting sick of it. Like, I'm like, bro, I'm so tired of like yelling my verses. Like, why do I have to like scream every fucking bar? Like, that's so exhausting. I know that I can just say what I need to say and communicate it with just my normal voice without going, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, fuck. Uh, you and I guess there's like some songs that you need to bring that energy, you know. Um, but I guess that when you're trying to find your own voice, that's just, I guess that's just like a you thing. Like, totally up to you when that happens when you when you decide oh this is this is me this is my pocket I belong here so so I think yeah. like in terms of you know I reckon like finding where you fit in the landscape of mm. whatever you're trying to do yeah is you know it can be quite frustrating I suppose yeah like yo like this is what traditional rappers are like yeah. and this is what traditional you know this is what this is and also like you know Another sequel, you're going to Sneakerholics. <laughs> Fucking three in a row. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. You know, finding that pocket of um, what who, who you are as a host. You know, that was your first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brother, fucking hell. You see why I'm here? Well, you see yeah, why I've I got see, a logo? I see, why, I see why your eyebrows are on your beanie. Bro, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see that. This is it. Well, my eyebrows that. are quite bushy, but you yeah. know, I've got the gap in the teeth yeah. because I segue. Yeah. Because there ain't no gaps in my segues. Yeah. Um, 
Do you know where Tintin and his dog is? Or is it just you on this? I know you and Samuel R. Jackson's hat need to get the fuck out of here, right? <laughs> You're going to give Samuel R. Jackson his, and, and your sister's sunglasses. Give him the fucking... But you know what I mean? Like, Sneakaholics, that would have been... You mm. jumped out of... Like, I didn't expect that you would have, you know, jump in to be a host or something. Mm. How did you feel, though? I felt pretty... Uh, it, it's, it's hard. It's not mm. easy. Like, it was, I guess... I guess I was my own worst enemy. I was like, bro, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like... Writing my own little script, and the script well, wasn't even I hard. Thought. I was like, "What the like, fuck are you in there for?" Yeah, that should bro, be me. Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck am I not in there? I was like writing these like <laughs> scripts. Like now, when I look back at it, it was fucking easy. Like I was just like, you know, because it was my first time experience. Did you write the that. script? Yeah, well, most of the, yeah, most yeah, of my okay. lines. Yeah, yeah, wrote them all. That's so, good. Um, but it was like putting that pressure on myself. Like I need to be the best at this, mm. but. And yeah, when you think about it, it's like, you can't just be the best straight away when you just step into something. Like everyone starts on like a 2kg dumbbell or like whatever, like, or, not, or I, mumble, I didn't start on a 2kg dumbbell, or, by the way. Or, or mumble by rapping. The way, by the way, nah. <laughs> or the mumble raps, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, start like, there. <laughs> you know, and that's why I keep saying to myself, like, um, you, you don't have to be uh, great to start, but you must start to be great. Like you got to start I somewhere. Feel, I feel like, to be great. listen, mm. you've given us a lot of quotes here. Okay. You've, you, fuck, I feel like we you're the quote counter. All, of, quote all of a sudden you've turned into the fucking rock. Bro. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm just saying like, that's what I've been telling you're myself right, like a lot. And I, to the know, day one or one day, bro, which one's going to be? Bro, exactly. Boom. Day one or one day. Boom. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Nah, to that's a bar. That's but a you know bar. what I mean? Like, yeah, it, might, it is a nerve wracking thing. Yeah. You get a lot of like imposter syndrome type buzz where you're like, fuck, should I, Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot like, oh, like, what am I even doing? Yeah. Like, what is this? Like, who? What am I? Like, it turned out great though. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I think what helped was because I knew a lot of the the cast already, like okay. who were, who I was talking to, mm. and so we kind of had like a, a bit of a, a rapport outside of yeah. sneakerholics. Takes the um, icebreaker out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Have to do that and shit. I think what I was more focused and worried about was how I presented myself on camera, how I looked. Like how I spoke, sorry. Um, and yeah, if I was just doing a good job, if I was coming across um, palatable for the viewers, mm. like watching. So I think that was my own, I was on my own, like fucking back like that. So, so, so yeah, so Sneakerholics is, uh, how many episodes was it? Seven. Seven episodes and it was all based around, and it's on TVNZ Plus, it was all based around shoes and the sneaker culture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just like, bro, every day, everyone's into something. So mm. I guess like, you know, and this is the first show in this country about that, like about shoes and um, people's lives and how, how they became not addicted, but, you know, sneakers became part of their lifestyle. Mm. Um, yeah. And just learning that anyone could be one of those, like anyone could be a sneaker holder. Because bro, I loved, um, before I even knew you, um, you know, on those, um, on the forums on Facebook, you were legendary, brother. When you used to ask random people about legit checking random people, yeah, yeah. and uh, just you know taking the piss out of it, it was it was it was what? lovely. It was I lovely, and I was like, "Who the that. hell is this Amon Tyson motherfucker?" What did I say? What was I saying? I remember there was one, and it was like, "Can I get a legit?" And you legit checked yourself. So legit checks <laughs> for those oh. <laughs> those people are like. You got to vouch yeah, for yeah, someone, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're in these forums, and you have to vouch that somebody is legit. You know, like they're not just thinking. You're like, "Yo, can I get a legit check on myself?" Because yeah. I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> no, I, bro, I thought that's what you like. <laughs> I, I was Shut like, "Shit, can?" Because like, I, I wanted. Um, I think I was selling shoes in like another forum. But, you know, obviously the same people belong in, in this forum. Don't so try to like, justify can that Can I shit? get a okay. legit check on me? Just so people can go, yeah, legit, legit. And then I can go on my way and selling my shoes because people I wish I knew you back then because I'd say this is one of the most scumbag motherfuckers <laughs> I've ever No, <laughs> no. I was being for real. Like I, I was trying to, um, yeah, I needed people to vouch for me so I could look stop, legit. Stop, stop it. Just stop right there. It's okay. Now, no, listen. Uh, the people know that you're, you, you know, you've got that. Yeah. That scumbag uh, essence in there somewhere. So don't try to fucking, hey guys, the way that I am, I'm INF. Uh, you know, like, hey man, shut the hell up. All right. I've seen that shit 
and it pissed mm. me off about you. Yeah. But does now, um when are you gonna give Pax his beanie back? Bro, that it, took you a long he, time to come. When does he, we when joked does he about that. Oh, did he? Did, we, did no, no, no. Me and you just oh, joked about that about five minutes ago. Um, that took you five minutes to come up with that nah, shit. No, man, I'm always you never know. I'm always on time. You better I'm shut the hell up. You better shut the hell up. But um, what did you learn about yourself then? Going back to like sneakerholics, what did you learn about? What did you learn about yourself, and what did you learn that you need to improve upon? Um, I learned that I <laughs> need us just worry less. Eh? That obviously that fucking doesn't get, get you anywhere. Mm. Um, and I needed to realize that fuck, I got this, man. Like stop, fucking, I need. fucking got this. Fucking need. And, <laughs> you know, like I fucking got this shit. So. I was realizing, man, like what I'm doing right now, like as an artist and stepping into the, the television, because that's your world, bro. Like, uh, not really. That's your world, man. Uh, not that's really. your world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is your I've world. only got a two minute segment every week on Crowd Goes Wild. And how okay. many weeks has that been so far? Been like 100. 200 minutes, bro. Okay. Hey, that's, hey. <laughs> that's not my podcast. That's 200 okay. minutes, man. Also, the bakery runs in uh, episode yeah. 60 at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, actually, you know, like the first couple of seasons of Bakery Run, yeah, we had different sneakers on every, every episode. Shit. Yeah, Damn. so this brings to the point: why in the bluest the blue house? Why the fuck was I not invited onto Sneakerholics, bro? Bro, I just want to let you know, I have. <laughs> I don't know what bridge I got a storage to unit. Send my G. To. Like there were so many bridges. Well, I tell you like what, under- you're one brick away from burning this bridge down. Okay. <laughs> If, if, if there's a season two and the bro's not even, I just want to be in the background. Okay. I don't even need to be interviewed. Bro, season two, season two. I want to just come and just on, give two. out sandwiches. Nah, bro. We, okay. <laughs> yo, there was like so many people that I wanted to have on the show, but because of like. Was I one? You didn't know. I don't, don't think so. I'm nah. Um, just of other things like, um, <laughs> like management or like legal stuff, but yeah, it is what it is, man. There's like, so many more. Yeah. I but obviously want to get them back on to, for season two. And, and in all seriousness though, yeah. I think you got, when you, you hit the nail on the head with the episodes that you had. Yeah. It's Sevilla and Shefu are the yeah. godfathers when yeah, it comes yeah, to yeah. shoes. So getting yeah. them on first and foremost was on. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you were like Daniel, um, DT, Daniel oh, Tupata. Um, but then all the way down to like, we had like the customizers, we had legit checks, we had Jesse and like, um, Randy. Um, so we had like, solid elements of of you know different uh, uh avenues in the sneaker world mm. like um so that was cool too like you got the young generation you got the the ogs um yeah collectors the the authenticators it stuff was like that. Cool Just to so see, many bro. things for people who don't even know what the fuck is going on in the sneaker world they go oh shit there's actually people that check if a shoe is real or fake or there's like actual people who make shoes to you know like customize shoes and stuff like that like because i know that there's people who just didn't know what the fuck like you know that this even existed what was your first pair that you can remember that were like yo i'm fucking i'm fucking swaggy out this yeah my first pair this year, I think I, this year? no oh, i mean oh, when you no let's share just, what's your oh, one? Oh, when um, you were younger um i think i would have been like 16 and i bought these it was like Air Force One, um, there was like, the whole pattern was like a patent, uh, patent leather and it was um, like the American flag, had the stars all over it. Um, had the, yeah, it was like red, white, blue. And I, fuck, I thought it was on. I, I got it from Loaded and like, you know, I thought it was fresh. I had like the matching um, Iverson oh, like, jersey, like the red sixes with the red, white, blue and then like the sixes cap. Bro, you all sixed it out. Bro, I was like, damn, I was in my dipset era. Like, bro, that's right. And I thought I was the shit, like, you know. And mm. I, I I need to find that pair again. So they were just the flag Air Force Ones that patent leather yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was the shit. What about you? Bro, I bro, I had the I had the Larry Johnson mm. Reacts, my G. Reacts. The Reacts. Oh shit. Converse Reacts. It had a, like a gel little thing. Cause I wanted yeah. them pumps. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, 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 yeah, I got to shout out my mum, by the way. Yeah. She lay by that shit for fucking three Bro, months. lay by. I know. And this is at Sterling Sports way back in Rewa. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember getting them, bro. 
And I just remember, bro, I'm the hottest thing on the fucking block right now. Yo, I couldn't rebound like Larry Johnson, but bro, I could, I could bust some dude's ankles. Yeah. I'm telling you. Do you still have them? Nah, no. Nah. Uh, this is. Would you buy another pair? Hell yeah, I would. But there's there's certain sneakers, right? Mm. Like you'd buy it regardless, right? Yeah. Because I, so I I collect like LeBron ones. Yeah. Like Air Zoom Generations. I've got like yep. seven pairs of them. Yeah. And they're all like, you know, rare. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna hold on to those because you never know. Yeah. When he retires, people are gonna want to buy that shit. Mm. And it's the same with all of that, you know, like, yeah, all the all the retros that are coming out. It's fucking dope, though. Yeah. It's cool that you got to document that shit. Yeah. And fuck, I'm, again, like, I'm still fucking appreciating it. Mm. Like, I'm still processing it because this, there's so much things that I'm blessed to do mm. to the point where I need to stop and just have show myself some gratitude and just be grateful for stuff. That's hard though, right? <clears throat> That's hard for anybody. Yeah. To smell the flowers, they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When do, What do you do? Like, how do you do that? Because I'm, I'm interested because there's stuff, like, you know me. Yeah. I don't really do that. I just keep mm. working, you know? Yeah. I think um, when I have moments of, yeah, because I'm like that too. Like, I work, 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 work. Mm. Uh, shout out to Rihanna. Um, <laughs> I like what you did there, brother. <laughs> right. Um, so... I have moments where I'm like, I have that, not self-doubt, but it's like, I, I'm i like, man, what the fuck have I done in this last year? Like, And then that's when I go, oh, wow, I achieved this. I got a TV show, got a song out, I've got this award. And it's like this big overwhelming feeling when I'm like, oh, fuck, I should have just, I should just stop and look at these, look at these awards, look at these trophies, like, Look at this TV show I've got. Look at these songs out and then just tell myself like, fuck, how, how cool is that? How amazing that you got to live this life and, and, you know, add value to all these different communities. Like you should be proud of yourself mm. and that should be, that should go for everybody. Like whatever you do, whether you work on an office, whether you're a truck driver, anything, I think you should always just show yourself some gratitude once you get home or like on your lunch break or something and just just say fuck I'm I'm doing so well like I'm proud of myself for getting yeah. this far because it's, it fucking helps like and fuck you don't end up it. eating yeah. yourself you know because I think I'm in like and it's great that you brought that up because yeah. I think I'm in that <clears throat> con conundrum at the moment right yeah. where I'm just like yo what's the next thing I gotta get on to this I yeah. gotta keep going I gotta do it but yeah a lot of the times you know like Bro, I think now personally, like I'm going through a bit of a time where I'm just like, bro, like, fuck, you've done so far. But if you quit now, it all goes back to square one. So you've got to mm. keep working. But that's not actually, that's not actually what happens. And I'm yeah. trying to make myself believe that. Mm. And, you know, it's a struggle, man. It's a big struggle. Yeah. You know? I, it consumes us, bro. A hundred. It consumes us. Like, again, like we get so deep into it. It's like we don't see the bigger picture and we're so... um passionate about it it becomes a reason for living mm. it's like i gotta do this every day like as i'm yeah. so into it like it becomes the reason why i wake up in the morning because i know i'm gonna like make some music today to the point where it's like man i need to just chill for like five minutes and appreciate what i've done like big or small yeah because that'll help you you know your body knows what's going on so you need to yeah. like up here you need to be on point with yourself and just be honest with yourself and be like, Hey, what's the hard, what's the great. hardest time you, you've, what's the hardest thing you've had to be honest to yourself about? Um, <clears throat> like accountable for. Yeah. Um, like I'm going through something just to, yeah, I'm going through something at the moment where I'm like, I'm kind of like, yo, you're not working hard enough. Mm. Like, and then, you know, cause I hold myself accountable if there yeah. hasn't shit coming out or if there isn't, you know, a podcast or if there's an social media shit, if yeah. there's an that coming out, that's on me, yep. you know? And sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. I th yeah. I feel you on that, man. I feel like. So it must be the same with music too, right? Yeah. Like I. You don't want people to forget who you are, but I don't think they yeah. will. Yeah. I think for me, it's just like, yeah, holding, keeping myself accountable and realizing that, um, you know, just. I have to be more patient mm. with myself. Like realize, man, there's 
timing. Like timing is is everything, I guess. But when it happens, it, it'll happen. Like I need to stop pressuring myself and and forcing things. I need to just yeah go not go with the flow. But when I'm working, I need to work with intention. So I'm not um, forcing any like unwanted energy out into the into the world. Mm. I need to just take my time and when these um, achievements that I want to reach happen, it'll happen. Um, yeah, so I, I think definitely. I just need to stop being so hard on myself. Yeah. I think you're, you're not, not the only one. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, everyone's, yeah. Yeah, everyone is their own worst enemy. Like yeah. I'm saying, yeah. But brother, I just want to say a huge thank you. And thank you for, oh, thank you. Thank you for being, bringing joy to a lot of people. Like I think, Love. you know, like a lot of people don't, I know it, a lot of people go, oh, it's just music or, oh yeah, yeah music, music, but, People resonate with with mm. any music, and yeah. for somebody that you know speaks the language of you know my people and people that are around me and myself, yeah. you know, I just want to say, yeah, a huge thanks, man, because you know yourself. And there's a lot of rappers out there and a lot mm. of musicians out there. Yeah, they're not even from New Zealand, but you can kind of or, or new from New Zealand, you can kind of go, yeah, I, I get what they're saying, and it makes you know it's like sharing a story. So thank you, brother. Thank you, bro. Thanks for having and, me, man. And man. same to you, bro. Like thanks for opening doors for so many people, so many creatives out there, like, and you're paving a way. Even for myself, when I see you out there, I'm like, man, I want to, I want to give this a go. Like, maybe I want to like, fucking. So you just copy my steez, bro. Pretty much, bro. That's like, the whole podcast. That's the, we've got him. We fucking got him. Much. He's been copying all my content. Much, man. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I just want to say, bro, oh, again, shout you. out to you, bro. You're doing really well. Like again, after this, bro, find, find some time to show yourself some gratitude and, and say that you're grateful for what you've done for yourself as well. Well, I'm grateful yeah. for you, brother. Um, love, bro. We're going to, um, yeah, th that's us for now. We're going to come back though. We'll be back on Wednesday for this new, I, I got this, I haven't even told you about this, bro, mm. but we've got a new, we've got a podcast on Wednesdays now. Mm. It's called the Goat Busters, brother. Goat Busters. So don't worry. I'm I'll, I'll, I'll run. Busting goats. Bro, that's what we're going to be doing when we come back on Wednesday. Okay. We <laughs> Shut the. <laughs> well, <laughs> All right, and we'll see you. Thank you, bro. Thanks, uh, thanks everybody. Yeah?